السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My brothers and sisters, what's the topic? The topic is actually the coronavirus. <clears throat> uh, it has actually gone from bad to worse. And to be very honest with you, I want to tell you what I am doing so that you can know what I have done. Number one, uh, I felt a slight scratch in my throat and I, I decided not to go to Salatul Jumu'ah. I was supposed to be the Imam, I was supposed to lead the prayer and I chose not to go to Salatul Jumu'ah because I don't want to put others at risk from me and I don't want to be at risk from others. So that was number one. And uh, like I told you, I do have a slight scratch in my throat. I, I'm still dealing with it, alhamdulillah. I had traveled and when I came back from my journey from Australia, which was already uh, a week back almost, just under a week, I think it's been six days i stayed away from my loved ones simply because i didn't want to put their lives at risk so what i did is i did not greet my mom or dad who are in their 80s i stayed away from them i just you know from a, a distance i told them look i'm not going to come close to you and I, um, there's no shaking of hands, no hugs. You know, the older generation find it very difficult to understand why you're doing what you're doing. But I didn't. After that, I have not been to the masjid. I must tell you that I have not been to the masjid. And I practice what I preach. Uh, I've just learned that the situation is across the globe is far worse. Notice my tajweed. There is a mud. You know, the mud lazim has sitta harakat, meaning six uh, letters. It is far worse than we initially thought it was. I've, I've witnessed many countries and it's just spiraling and people are not taking it seriously. So I'd like to be a person who goes down in history from among the Muslims, who very strongly told the Muslimin not to go to the masjid. I'm not talking about closing or not closing the masjid because I've already said my opinion in that regard. I believe that it's not an issue of closing. It's just suspending uh, the congregational prayers within the masjid for a while. And those congregational prayers can continue in the house, in the home. I have been home. I have come out only for necessity. That's what I believe. I haven't come out of my motor vehicle. Uh, when I've been places uh, and now I, I'm, in, I'm in my home, I'm in my yard and that's it. I have, you can call it what you want, self-quarantine. I'm in a, in a country where the first case was only discovered yesterday, was confirmed yesterday, but I believe that there are so many people with the symptoms. Uh, and I do think that, you know what, we're going to lose a lot of a generation uh, perhaps many of our loved ones may Allah make it easy for us it's very difficult for me to say this I think we're gonna lose a lot of our loved ones before Ramadan uh, I have a feeling the whole world is gonna change completely totally we're going to have to embrace this whole new way of looking at things uh, I think a lot of the scholars who are not being hard enough are making a big mistake I think so I'd like to go down on record uh, for that because we'll only know what I'm saying in about four weeks from now. I think the burial committees of the Muslims need to start preparing very, very drastically for hundreds of people. And I think we're going to need to do that. I'm giving you my thoughts based on sound, sound knowledge. When I say sound knowledge, I mean I've been reading very, very much. I've had sleepless nights reading, checking, verifying, speaking to some of my friends who have, who have co coronavirus, COVID-19. I'm speaking to some of them. 
I'm not scaring you. I think the older generation who really are desperate to go to the mosques are the first ones who should be fulfilling their prayers at home. They are high risk. I think keep your children at home. Don't go to congregational prayers. Whether the masjid is open or not is a separate point. I don't want to argue with those scholars, but I'd like them to know my opinion because I think uh, they will really consider what I've said, you know, within the books of history in a short space of time. I also think that uh, this is a very, very serious thing and it's no use to say if you have symptoms. I think I'm finding that to be quite foolish. I'm finding that to be quite foolish because there are no symptoms. There are no symptoms. The symptoms come about when it's too late. Remember this. The symptoms come about when it's too late. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, stay at home. Don't go out without necessity. Wash your hands often. Put on your mask if you have one when you're going out. Put on your, you know, something that covers your eyes. It actually enters through the eyes, the nose and the mouth. I may be affected. I have a very, very slight doubt. But you know what? I, I want to make you guys laugh. When, like, I have a problem. What's the problem? If you say, don't touch your face, it starts itching here. It starts itching down there. I feel like scratching. I, my nose starts itching. I don't know if it happens to you guys. If I say, don't touch your face, not at all. You become more conscious of it. If I were to tell you that one of the first signs is a slight scratch in your throat, uh, a little bit of dryness, an itchiness perhaps, a slight fever, very light. Uh, subhanallah. Uh, I, I, I must tell you that, you know what, if I were to say that, you'll start becoming more conscious. I became more conscious of my throat when one of my friends who's now really suffering with this uh, is actually, uh, you know, he, he, he spoke to me. I've been speaking to a few of the guys. One of them was telling me, Mufti, please take this seriously. Uh, please, you know, understand uh, you have to say this to the whole world. Tell them, take it seriously, you know, take off work, forget about the financial loss. We've all lost financially. Uh, there's a lot you're going to have to be on your self-imposed little lockdown and little isolation. Uh, I'm talking here, obviously, about, um, you know, the countries that are that have not yet taken it seriously. OK, I feel very sorry for us uh, within some of the African and third world countries, because when I watch Italy and when I watch um, America and uh, the other advanced countries and I look at how even in the in you in the UK and apparently the UK is very very serious um, I sit and think these are first world countries who are saying we cannot cope I, I, I really don't want to see two three weeks from now when the third world countries forget about not being able to cope but it's going to be worse than we can imagine like I said the burial committees please start making uh, arrangements for uh, many more deaths than you actually think and I, I'm not being a prophet of doom I'm just letting you guys know uh, what I found helps is and, and this from talking to people from reading and talking to people who are affected who are who are confirmed cases uh, where they're saying you know what uh, salt water hot salt water gargles because obviously it starts off at the throat after that, you see the other symptoms. Then the fever comes up. You start getting a tightening of the chest. And you start, if I were to ask you how many of you have these symptoms, you start getting a fever. A lot would have the symptoms. I thought, let me just uh, speak to you guys. Somebody saying, be careful to me. I'm asking you guys to be careful. Really, take it seriously. Your older people, just impose a curfew on them. Forget about what they say. You know, sitting and watching Wuhan and how in some parts of China, initially they had to force the guys off and make sure that they told them, listen, you're not moving. And that's when it helped. So I just take it seriously. This does not negate our trust in Allah. I trust in Allah completely. I really, I believe in Allah and I know when we're going to die, we're going to die even if it's next week. May Allah gr grant us shahada and make us from those who get Jannatul Firdaus. Uh, so basically, you know, in Islam, there's nothing hard and fast to say that even even when life is at stake, you have to keep on doing something because you feel it's never happened in my life. You know, people are saying, how can we suspend the prayers in the masjid? We're not suspending prayers. We're only suspending or we're only calling for the suspension, temporary suspension for this period of time 
of the congregation of Muslimin among the do you know that in some other countries the highest number or there is a let me word it this way there's a very high number of Muslims who are affected and the reason is they've been foolish that's why they, they, they think that part of trust in Allah is to keep doing what you're doing when when obviously uh, you have a problem you know I have the hadith of the Prophet where he says if you heard of a plague in a place don't go in and don't come out I like I'd like to say that that isn't that part of laying your trust in Allah? The Prophet ﷺ laid his trust in Allah and told us to us. If, he, if, if, we, if it was us in his place, we would say, why do you want to come out or go in to this? Uh, you know, why are you talking about coming out and going in? Shouldn't you be having the trust in Allah? Well, isn't that stupid? Do you know what I'm trying to say? He had the most trust in Allah than all of us. And still he's saying, don't go in or come out. Why? Because he had the real trust in Allah. So those who are saying that, no, there's nothing wrong. I think within your homes, you laying your trust in Allah would mean don't put your loved ones at risk by allowing them out. I've made a rule for my family and I don't care what happens except for dire necessity. They're not allowed to leave the home and you're not allowed to let anyone in. And I don't, I, it's okay, whoever you are, you, you, you can, you know, we have these rules and regu regulations imposed. Although in my country, there's only been one confirmed case, perhaps another two. Maybe we're sitting at three today, but I just want to tell you these precautions are very necessary. It's part of your faith in Allah. I won't allow myself to go out or come in unnecessarily. Uh, I know the next one or two days I might have something necessary to do, but even in that case, I don't, I, I'll try not to come out of my own motor vehicle. So I'll jump into my vehicle within my yard. And those of you who know Africa, we've got yards that are, mashallah, okay. And I will jump out of the car back when I'm in my yard. So there's the contamination and so on. So you have to take it seriously. Uh, a lot of you might be affected without knowing. Uh, don't worry. Uh, I guess you have to practice. You have to learn not to shake hands. When I went to the masjid, I didn't shake anybody's hands. When I when I came back uh, in my own home, I haven't shaken anybody's hands, and it's been a while. Like I told you, my own parents, elderly, in their 80s, I haven't. Sh I've kept a distance from them. My own brothers and, and my family members, no shaking hands, kept a distance from them. And uh, people, I, I want you to know this because I am I'm talking about Zimbabwe. We've had our first case uh, confirmed and it may perhaps another two cases. I haven't yet seen it from the official sites, but I've heard it via some, some uh, you know, sites. So, uh, subhanAllah, may Allah make it easy. I really love all of you and I care for you. That's why I'm telling you this. Uh, those of you who are scholars out there, I don't care what you think of me. I don't care. You can say what you want. You can think we don't lay trust in Allah. We have greater trust in Allah than you and we have the correct trust. If you were to analyze the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, if you hear of a ta'un or a, you know, a pandemic that has, if you, you know, this type of a plague in a place, don't go into the place and don't come out of the place. That is that not laying trust in Allah? You guys, if you were there at the time, you would have told the Prophet himself that what type of trust do you have in Allah? Na'udhu Billah. Whereas he had the greatest trust in Allah and still he blocked people from going in or coming out. So because in our context, it's no longer to do with cities. It's in every city. So you have to quarantine yourself in your own house, whether you like it or not. Learn from other countries. I promise you, take a look at it. Go and study. Check what's happened. Be within your home. I'm telling you, if your masjid is open or closed, don't go. Neither for Jumu'ah nor for Jama'ah. Do that same in your home. I'm not saying don't pray. I'm saying you don't need to go into the public spot. There are more people affected than you know. If people don't say this, trust me, I don't mind being castigated by my own kith and kin. They will. They will call me names. They will say what they want. It's okay. Four weeks from now, you will all want to kiss me. Do you know what? I hope... We're still alive to do that, inshallah. But what I mean by that is not kiss, but I mean you'll, you'll, you'll agree with what I have to say. Four weeks from now, you will agree with what I have to say. So I'm telling you guys, let's not debate about whether the mosque should be open or not. I'm talking about those countries where it is still open uh, and, and, and they have had a few cases, you know, more than five, ten cases confirmed. I promise you, save yourselves, save your families. Don't go, don't go out unless it's necessary. I told my kids today, I don't care about school. You don't need to go. You don't need to have an education for one year. We can cut it out. Your life is more important than your education.
remember that. I mean, uh, we're fortunate we have long distance learning. The schools are telling us things. I'm telling you, your jobs, your money, your wealth, your, your loved ones, whatever. What's the most important at this moment is life. I heard some scholars say that the protection of the dean comes before the protection of your life. Uh, while I do agree there's difference of opinion which one comes first, but even if we do say that the protection of your deen comes before the protection of life, that's got nothing to do with closing of the masjid. It's, it's not like you're going to lose the deen. It's a temporary suspension of activity for a short while. We have to deal with something major. I want to tell you once again, I have a feeling that the world is going to change in the next few weeks. The whole world is going to change in the next few weeks. And you know what? People who are talking like they like they have the trust in Allah, so therefore we must congregate. They are the first ones who are going to agree with what I'm going to say. Today I told someone, brother, please open your mouth. Just before Ramadan, open your mouth. I am not leaving my home, I promise you. I, whether it's to the masjid or whether it's to anywhere else, unless there is a necessity, if we have to buy necessity, and even that, we are taking all precautions, you know, uh, we have to make sure, the, like the older folks, I hope that you guys understand what I'm saying. This is very, very serious. My brothers and sisters, uh, I pray that Allah make it easy for those working in the health department. Uh, we love you all. We're making dua. You're doing a fantastic job so far in many countries. The guys are working tirelessly. Uh, they are all warning us and we're not taking the warnings. And people are thinking, no, I have trust in Allah. I'm a Muslim. I've never, we're doing the work of Allah. How can we? If the Prophet ﷺ was here, I have a feeling he would have told you, don't come out of your homes because your homes at this moment are, in our context, are similar to the, the, the towns that he was talking about when he was saying, to, if you know of a plague, don't go in, don't go out. I have a feeling in today's context, it's got to do with your own home because it's in every city. It's everywhere. You think it's not in your city. It's there. They haven't had the test kits or perhaps they don't know, but it's there. The symptoms are there. The symptoms are there. Then you know what? You have to make sure that you, you take heed. My brothers and sisters, it's not... I'm not saying don't pray. Pray more. Do your Quran. I want to start live sessions to read Quran here. I, I actually brought my Mus'haf. I want to complete a Quran every three days. I want to read 10 Jews a day. And I want to actually do a lot more. Uh, you know, speaking about hoarding and so on. I think the, the governments need to act to restrict what type of things they're selling and so on. You know, to have things within your home that's for the next week or two or three or maybe, maybe in some instances a month. Uh, may be acceptable in some cases but my brothers and sisters I promise you tomorrow you may hear that I am affected and that's why I'm telling you guys take this seriously take it very seriously the problem is when we talk about symptoms for 14 days at times there's no symptoms so when you say only those with, without symptoms only those without, sympt uh, without symptoms should come to the public congregation places you know, that is such a foolish statement because there are no symptoms in the first 14 days and that's when we're communicating it to everyone. Today, someone was telling me that in New York City, they don't know, perhaps thousands of people might be affected, a certain percentage of the population, and we don't know. I don't know. I'm not from there and I don't want to be a prophet of doom. You see, I, I, I touched my eye. We're not supposed to be doing that. But like I say, I have a problem. If you tell me don't touch, I become more conscious of it. I don't know. It starts itching somewhere and I feel like touching. I don't know if it happens to you guys. But... My brothers and sisters, it's not just a matter of hygiene and this thing can be coming in the air somehow. People, it's still a relatively new thing. Uh, we have to be proactive. We have to be scholars who marry the Islamic knowledge with the uh, medical knowledge. Because, because I, have ha I have guys who I love who are absolutely uh, affected by this, uh, I decided to make this video. I know of people. I know people whom I know on a personal note are affected and they are they are battling for their lives may Allah make it easy for them that's why I'm telling you guys take it easy and I really I don't know what to say okay there goes I'm probably for some reason I, I won't be able to save this uh, video so I'm gonna make another one for Facebook another one for YouTube and I'm gonna be talking live to you guys and uh, someone is saying, fasting, help me make it disappear. I told you initially that yes, we lay tawakkul on Allah, we make istighfar, seek the forgiveness of Allah. One might say, why should I seek the forgiveness of Allah? Because if you seek the forgiveness of Allah, there are so many benefits of it. 
And one of the benefits is that if there was punishment coming in your direction, it wouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, Allah wouldn't allow it to to be to a punishment. So if it's coming, it'll come as a test, but not as a punishment. That's if you're seeking istighfar. I told you about uh, salt water, hot salt water gargles. Uh, I want to tell you, uh, don't drink anything cold at all. Not even room temperature. Warm your water before you drink it. And worst case scenario is the room temperature, but warm your water before you drink it. Uh, have have lots of tea, perhaps herbal teas, maybe you know black teas, whatever. Uh, something warm, keep, you know, have warm stuff. Uh, lemon water, warm lemon water, as warm as you can take it. Warm lemon water, twice, twice a day, please, please. You guys are fortunate where you have, uh, you know, uh, you have this available. Some countries won't even have it avail available. So basically, this is only some of my message. I'm praying for Syria, for Yemen, for Iraq, for Afghanistan, for all those who are in camps and tents and the refugees and those who are displaced and those in prisons. I mean, even if they're in prisons, they are our brothers and sisters. They may have made mistakes and been in prison. Some of them might be there innocent, but we pray for them. Those who are unhealthy in their homes. Another thing is, if we're going to go back to Allah, we're going to go back to Allah. We're going to go meet him. Just prepare for a meeting with Allah. I told you my throat has a scratch, didn't I? Someone is saying your eyes are watery. Someone is telling me things. You know what? Could be possible. I'm going to be talking to you. Uh, it says there, if I do not go to Jumu'ah for three weeks, how is that possible? If there is a valid reason like this one, it is possible. And you know what? They, 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 this is unprecedented. Like I say, I'm telling you from a religious perspective, in your heart you feel sad. I'm so, so sad to say what I've said. It pains me, but we have to build the courage to say the right things. I know of a lot of scholars. They know the right thing, but they don't have the courage to talk. They, for some reason, they don't want to take the flack. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to put forth. I tell you, the guys who are going to be congratulated in the future are those who, who actually suspended the, the masjid activities completely. The people who are going to be congratulated are the ones who have suspended their masjid activities completely i tell you another thing somebody said that turkey said or the turkish president said that we are muslims we don't care for corona there's going to be salah with no restrictions that's a lie that's a total fabrication because the mosques were closed in turkey as well and everywhere mostly across a lot of countries i'd like to say that the the, the activities of the mosque were suspended let's word it that way so can we you know can we understand this uh, the question is, have you taken a test for COVID-19? I tried. I tried very hard. I wasn't able to take one. If any one of you tries, they won't really test you. Uh, I think authorities will not test you in a rush. They say you have to have symptoms and you have to. And what's the point of testing anyway? Because you know what? Now we're realizing that you have to, quarantine, you have to practice self-quarantine no matter where you are. Where you are, no matter where you are. Stay at home. Don't mix. It's going to be too late. If they test you and you're positive, what are they going to do? You know what they'll do to you? They'll probably take you away in a ruthless way from your family and loved ones. And you might die a very lonely and sad death, maybe. Or who knows? You know, there might be recovery. So I think the high risk guys, those are the ones being given preference when it comes to the tests. It's really a tough one. Uh, they're testing celebs. Yeah, I, I wanted to pay to be tested. No, they no ways, not good enough. So, like I was saying, another thing that I'm taking, I'm having a little bit of black seed oil, uh, very little bit of black seed oil twice a day. I'm having, uh, I'm doing my salt goggles twice a day. I've got a mouthwash that I'm using to goggle with, uh, also a few times a day. I'm having warm water. I, I'm trying to eat as best as I can. I'm having my supplements. Uh, I, I, I'm taking. Uh, I'm having turmeric. Turmeric is something I, I, I like it. I'm having some turmeric as well. And uh, subhanallah, there is a lot more that I'm doing. I told you I'm staying away from my parents who are elderly, my, my family members. I'm keeping a distance. Uh, I returned from a long from from a journey and I haven't even met my own parents. I am not going to the masjid. I told you I was supposed mm -hmm. to do the I was supposed to be the Imam of Salatul Jumu'ah. I decided not to go simply because of a scratch in my throat. Now, a slight bit and I'm preaching this. How can I preach it and go? 
I'm not going to go, I promise you. And, and you know what? I want to congratulate those who were brave and made big decisions. I really want to say, may Allah bless you with Jannah. The others might be guilty one day of genocide. Well, what I mean by genocide is guilty of killing off a lot of humanity because today we're being brave and we're saying, Ma, we have taqwa, we have yaqeen, we have conviction in Allah and so on. Wait until your loved ones are on their deathbeds. You are not going to forgive yourself for what you said. Remember this, I'm addressing the scholars here. You're not going to forgive yourself for what you said. Minimum is tell people, look, we, we're acknowledging that there's a massive crisis. Make your salah at home. Let's not talk about whether or not to close the mosque if you're so coward as to leave it. And I've heard senior scholars making statements that are so, so bad. I'm just telling you guys, wait for two weeks, three weeks, and then talk again. Let's see how you change your tune. We are telling you from now, you know, the masjid is one of the super spreaders simply because we go down in sujood. When you're down in sujood, you've breathed the, the, the carpet. That carpet for the next 9 to 14 days, anyone who comes down there, you are gone in the sense that the chances of you catching it are almost 80%. Look at that. So I'm trying to tell you guys, this is something serious. Take it seriously. If your old folks want to go visiting, no one must visit you and you don't go visiting anywhere. Nothing. Stay at home. If they want to go to a little program here or there, you know what? Benefit online. Introduce your older folks to that which is online. Let them listen to the lectures. Let them benefit from something. Don't allow them to go. Stay at home. I am staying at home. I'm doing it myself. What I'm telling you, I'm practicing what I'm preaching. And I've told my family members, you know what? School or no school, I don't care. You stop it. Whether, the, whether they've stopped it or not. I think in my country, from Tuesday, schools are closed anyway. So I don't even want them to go for Monday and Tuesday simply because, you know what, it's, it's sad. When I was leaving Australia, I was supposed to leave on Monday. I, one more day I stayed and I regret staying, but I couldn't help it because they, they told me that, you know, something's wrong with your booking. You're going to have to stay an extra day. And I really feel, you know, guys, take this seriously. Travel and all that. Cut it. Stop it. Don't worry about the loss of your holidays. We've canceled Turkey. What a massive decision very difficult so what it was made and i told you cancelled i cancelled umrah i was going to umrah after a long time with my with some of my family we paid everything we actually the tickets done i don't mind what the loss is i'm actually so happy to not to have gone even if i were to die let me die in the presence of my loved ones who it's just it's something may allah make it easy for all of us so guys take this seriously no matter where you are i don't mind i don't care which country you are and I want to tell the scholars of, of Deen, please say what you want about me. I know some people have, have really sworn those who have called for the suspension of activities in the masjid. They've sworn them. I, let's talk after three weeks. Meet me after three weeks if I'm still alive and if you're still alive. And let's see what you have to say afterwards. And you know what? I wonder how you're going to face Allah when you put so many thousands of Muslims' lives at risk. And you knew it and we told it to you and the experts told it to you and you think, please look at what's happening in Italy. Go and watch what's happening everywhere. Look at what's happening in the UK, everywhere else. Take a look. I, I'm talking to you from Zimbabwe, here from Southern Africa. And I promise you, let's be brave enough to make the decisions. I know there are some who, who will say, I'm 80 years old. I haven't missed a single salah for the last so many years in the masjid. Now, uh, for the sake of Allah, you're going to have to do it. Like I told you. If, the, if you guys were there at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, you might have argued with him when he said, don't go into a town or don't come out of the town. Why would he say that if he's, if he's tawakkul in Allah and his trust in Allah is the highest and biggest from all of us? Why would the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, say, don't go into the town and don't come out of the town? Wouldn't he have said, we've got trust in Allah. I am the Prophet of Allah. I'm the best of creation, the most noble of prophets. Go in and come out. Nothing will happen to you. Read your Yasin Khatams. I was laughing at that, not because I don't want people to read Quran, but because that as much as you're going to read it, you have to take precautions. Stop blackmailing the people religiously. You're blackmailing the elderly. You're blackmailing the, the pious. You're blackmailing the guys who are going to go to the mosques. You're blackmailing everyone if the Prophet Sallam uh, if he had told us that when a plague comes have full trust in Allah you're a believer nothing will happen I would have been the first one to say it. but guess what our beloved Prophet said he said when a plague comes don't go in don't go out I in our context it's no longer a city because it's in every city it's to do with your home stay indoors don't go out it is I'd like to think if if you know that it's in your town it's in your town 
Don't go, if you go out of that home, you have gone against the instruction of the Prophet I don't know what the others will say, but that's my opinion. And I'd like to go down in history as the one who advocated very strongly to say, listen, guys, stay at home. Don't move. Don't participate in congregational activities within the mosque. When people are saying, oh, a gathering of less than 100, to me, if whether you're five or you're 100, you're still going to be affected by this one or that one. Minimize everything. Cut out that which is unnecessary. And trust me, may Allah have mercy on all of us. May Allah have mercy on all of us. I've said enough. I've spoken my piece. I think I've given the solid dose. I, I hope that I can save this, but for some reason my phone is not saving these, uh, these sessions. I'm going to go back when I have a moment, perhaps tomorrow on Facebook and say the same thing. And I'll go to YouTube and say the same thing. Because we care for the Ummah. Why? We are Muslims. People look up to me. I want to give you the guidance and advice. I would be the last one to ever give you the wrong advice if I know it's Qala Allah, Qala Rasul. I'm not going to change it. I promise you, it is well within the Sharia. Today I sit and look at, look at Saudi, for example. I was so upset when, when the masjids were closed, when the, when, when the haram, I was so, so upset. But you know what? At hindsight, I promise you that lockdown has helped them go and check the cases. They are still spiraling, but the lockdown has helped them tremendously, tremendously. I don't want to advocate for shutting downs. I'm just saying suspend it for now. Suspend it until further notice. Use good words for the people to hear. Anyway, I told you I have a little, you know, scratch in my throat. I'll give you an update as to how I'm feeling over the days. Uh, I really don't know what else to say to the guys, brothers and sisters. Uh... I just want to say take this seriously I love you all so much that's why I'm telling this to you if I didn't care why do I need to tell you anything what what am I saying to you think about it there's two opinions one is saying put your life at risk and trust in Allah the other one is saying don't put your life at risk and still trust in Allah common sense what are you going to do may Allah forgive all of us and grant us goodness grant us protection and may he, may he make it that I'm not affected and may he make it that you guys are not affected I'm sure from amongst you there are many who have the symptoms and you know what? I might even pose a question on Facebook to say, or on Twitter, if you have any of the following symptoms, please like this and let's see what happens. May Allah forgive all of us. Guys, world's going to change in a little while. And I want to tell you, don't, don't become too, uh, you know, don't be saddened and don't become depressed. But listen, rise to the occasion. I told you I might be having it. Do I look depressed? No. If it was, I've taken all precautions. If Allah still wanted me to have it, I've got it. And uh, if Allah doesn't want, I don't have it. So there goes. There goes my brothers, my sisters. Take care. Love you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.